everyone, it is the 1st of December and I am going to attempt to do Vlogmas this year. Um, I was a little concerned when looking at my schedule because I have two 20 page papers due on the 12th and a paper due on the 19th. So December is super busy for me. And last year I only had work to contend with. This year I have work and school and just kind of writing papers. So it's going to be really busy. So I'm going to cut back a bit on Vlogmas and I'm just going to do a video every single weekday. I'm going to give myself weekends off and I am going to allow myself to pre-film. Last year I edited, uploaded and like did everything in the same day. And that was really stressful and I just, I. I can't do that this year. Um, I'm actually filming this on the 30th of November because tomorrow I have like a 16 hour day between work and school and I'm just, I'm not home. I don't, I don't have time to film. Um, I have to be at work at like five o'clock in the morning. So yeah, this is, this is being filmed at six o'clock at night before I go to bed in like an hour because I have to be up at four. So I thought I'd start Vlogmas out strong and talk about the books that I read last month. Um, well, I guess technically this month when I'm filming it. So I read six books, which is a lot of them were read earlier on in the month. Um, I kind of not as the month got on, I got busier. And so I stopped reading as much, but I did get through quite a lot and I'm pretty happy with what I read. Um, so the first book I read is of course the Thomas Hardy book. Um, I read this with Yamini and and Katie, of course, and it was The Well Beloved by Thomas Hardy. This is the second last Thomas Hardy novel that we had to read. Um, th this month's is going to be The Hand of Ethelberta, I think, um, and that's the very last Thomas Hardy book we have to read out of his entire bibliography. So that's kind of rather sad, but also it's it's relieving. This has been a big project and I'm going to talk about like projects and TBRs um, during Vlogmas. One of the reasons I really want to do Vlogmas is that I just, I love doing videos and I haven't been able to do as much with grad school. But this was a really disappointing hearty read and we all kind of agreed. It was a solid like two to three stars for pretty much all of us. Um, it just, it wasn't, yeah, it just, it, the story was just, oh, the main character basically, he falls in love with this idea of the of a woman which he calls the well-beloved and it like travels from woman to woman and he's kind of, it's just, it's very strange and it involves him falling in love with different generations of the same family. So like his original like kind of love and then her daughter and then her daughter and it's just, it's not, it's not good. I did not enjoy it very much. I mean, the writing of course is fantastic because it's hearty, um, but yeah, it just, it was not good. I would not, I mean, do it if you're gonna do Hardy's bibliography, but otherwise give it a pass. I'm also gonna quickly adjust the camera. I don't normally do this, but it's Vlogmas, so I can get a little crazy. I'm just gonna notice that I was getting a little cropped out there. So then the next book that I read, I really enjoyed. And it is John Wyndham's The Midwich Cuckoos. I kind of read this as a bit of a change of pace because I was feeling a little like Victorian literature. I love it and everything, but I'm just, I've read so much recently. I need a break and I love John Wyndham. And I'm actually, this saved me so much because I am now writing my Cold War history paper on it, which those of you who like may or may not know, I am not a modern historian. I am an early modern historian. So I focus on like Renaissance basically. Um, so I had to take a Cold War class because it was just, it was all that was available. And I was racking my brains for what to write. And I read this early on in the month and I have decided to write a paper, which I have to come up with a snappy title. So if you have suggestions for the title for this paper, let me know, but I'm really excited to write it. And it's basically post-colonial British views on the third world during the Cold War through the lens of John Wyndham. And this book, this book was the inspiration. Um, I actually did a presentation on it today for my class and I think it went pretty well. Like I think my professor was like pretty impressed with, with how I like, you know, did it. And I might do a video later on in this month talking about that paper once I get it written. Um, but The Midwich Cuckoos is really interesting because it's speculative fiction and basically um, the premise of the plot is the small town in Midwich in England um, falls asleep when a silver object kind of appears, like all the inhabitants fall asleep. And then one day later they all wake up and all the women of childbearing years are pregnant. So nine months later, 31 boys and 30 girls are born. I think one child dies of complications in childbirth. Um, and it's very evident that these are like, they don't share any of the genetic characteristics of their parents. They're like, they're clearly like 
other. They, they grow at an accelerated rate, they have telepathic powers, um, and they can control what other people do. And what's really interesting is how, like, Wyndham presents how British society deals with this situation and the othering, and there's definitely clear links to kind of race issues because there's there's segregation of these children, there's violence against them because they're different. Um, they kind of become very protectionist and violent um, in themselves, and they don't like, it's just, it's very interesting. And what's particularly interesting and what I'm talking about partially in my paper is how Wyndham presents like other countries' reactions, because Midwich isn't the only place that this happens. It happens in an Inuit village, it happens in a small town in Australia, um, I think, and I could get this wrong, a town in Malaysia, and also in a, like in the Soviet Union. And it's just interesting to see the parallels between how diff how Wyndham perceives how different countries would react to this situation. And it kind of like, it like really strongly feels like British, like post-colonial British superiorism. Um, and it's really interesting and I'm really excited to explore this in a paper. So the next book that I read this month was actually a birthday gift from my friend Cassie um, and it is Fred Ullman's Reunion. Um, this is really, really short. I think it's only, I think it's like 85 pages. Not, yeah, it's like 80 pages. Um, and it basically tells the story of a young Jewish boy in pre kind of Nazi Germany and his relationship with a German boy. And it's, it's very, I don't know. It wasn't really my thing. I'm sorry, Cassie. It just, I get that it's a very important work, but it just, you know, it, it wasn't, it deals, it deals with issues of anti-Semitism. Uh, I'm not a big fan of like, fiction that deals with the world wars that's not a period I'm particularly interested in. Um, especially not the way that they deal with them directly because it's not a period of history that I like studying and it's not particularly a period of history that I like reading about. I also don't really remember this book particularly well. I read this at the beginning of the month and it's not, I'm like trying to remember things specifically to say about it. So that's how much of an impression this made on me. I'm like, I remember it was about two boys. One of them was Jewish and one of them wasn't. And it, it, it talked about like kind of the rise of Hitler and like, you know, social attitudes towards Jewish people, but I don't remember any particulars. So then I also did a buddy read with Ange and we read Emile Zola's Germinal. Um, Ange liked this a lot more than I did. This is actually fairly hefty and this has been sitting on my shelf for ages and I'm really glad to have gotten this off my TBR because now I'm gonna get rid of it. I did not love this book. Um, this deals kind of with socialist issues and a mining community in France. What's interesting, and I talked this, about this a bit in my French literature TBR, um, I'll put a card up so you guys can click on that once this is done. Um, this book was supposed to be continued in The Beast Within, but people really liked the protagonist in this book and so Zola decided to not make him because he it, there's a, it's a killer in The Beast Within. Um, I had a lot of issues with this book, so some trigger warnings. There is rape culture abundantly in this and like you actually see the main love interest like being led off to be raped and the protagonist is just like, well, she's saying no, but we all know girls mean yes. And that was at about page 100. And this is, I think this is like a four, 500 page book. So that's not really a spoiler. Um, and I could never really move past that. It just, it made me angry and I never moved past it. And I just like, I, I also think I just don't do well with mining stories. I really didn't enjoy How Green Was My Valley, and this is another mining story that I've read this year, and I just, I think mining stories just depress me. Um, did anybody else watch, like, Pit Pony growing up? Um, this was, this was a TV series that was on, and I think it traumatized me, be and like, also, animals die in this, just as a heads up. There are animals in the mine and they do not survive. Um, as with all mining stories, they normally end in some kind of disaster. Let's be, let's be realistic. I think that's part of what I don't like is that there's always death. There's always like issues with the mines. Mines are not stable places and you can predict that. And if there's ever an animal that's in the book, you know, that's going to die. You know, it's going to die. And you know how much I don't like it, it when animals die. I'm very protectionist of my animals. Um, 
so yeah, it just, it just, I didn't love it. Zola, this is, this is my second Zola. Love the first. This one, not so much. So yeah, that was, I think I gave it two stars and ended up giving it four. So I'm interested to kind of hear her thoughts because we, we kind of both got busy and didn't really finish discussing it. So I'm curious to hear her thoughts on that. Then I did a buddy read with Tanya over at List Obsessed Reader and it's been ages since we've done a buddy read and we, she was kind of like, I want to read Dickens. And I was like, I kind of don't feel like reading Dickens at the moment. And then I was like, no, I'm going to start a Dickens because I just have this compulsion to read more Dickens. And I read Dombey and Son. Um, I know this is one of Katie's favorite books and I went back and watched her video and I think a lot of what she said is really interesting she did a whole series where she goes through every single um dickens book called what the dickens because she's read his entire bibliography and she's fantastic and go check out her channel um but <sighs> dombey and son was a slow burn for me it took me a really long time to become connected to the characters and it wasn't until like halfway through that i finally was like oh okay and I don't know if it was because I was listening to it on audiobook and the narrator wasn't my normal narrator and I just it took me a while to get used to it because I hadn't listened to an audiobook for a while but it just it was a real slow start and to be fair Tanya also felt the same way like she also had trouble connecting with the characters so we were both kind of complaining about this a bit we were like this is this is you know it's not but midway through it gets really good and I think for Dickens, this is one of his better portrayals of women. It, it definitely has a lot more nuance than he normally does in his portrayals of women. Um, so I'm definitely, I gave it four stars. It's more like a three and a half, um, but Goodreads doesn't have half stars. And I think this is one that I really want to revisit um, and kind of analyze knowing the story ahead of time because not knowing the story made it, I was just constantly being like, all right, when am I gonna connect with these characters? When am I gonna, like, what is the importance of this? Um, and I think this is a book that on first reading, it doesn't seem like much. And then when you go back, it becomes so much more. So I'm not writing this off. I'm definitely gonna revisit it in like a year or so, but yeah, it was, it was good towards the end. I really enjoyed it. And then the last thing I read um, is in a collection and I've read two of these in the collection and it is Mary Wollstonecraft's Mary. I have it in this bind up with her other work Maria which I'm currently reading. Um, I just couldn't get done in time for the end of the month. I normally don't like carrying books over but just too busy with grad school and Mary Shelley's Matilda which I've already read. Um, Mary is really interesting. It I hadn't read any of Mary Wollstonecraft's fiction before and her fiction is very much along the lines of the vindication of the rights of women so it's 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 early feminist work and it's you can really see that it almost you know sacrifices the plot a little bit but i i think i'm enjoying the second work a lot more than the first um it was still a solid like i would say that this is like a three three star read so it's not bad um and mary deals with a young aristocrat aristocratic, sorry, words today, um, woman in England, and she's kind of neglected by her parents a bit. Um, she has a brother who's the heir and is like the apple of everybody's eyes, and then he dies and she becomes the heiress. Um, and it just deals with her relationships. Um, I think it's particularly interesting because it focuses on female friendship as well as like male friendship and platonic male friendship. Um, and like unrequited love, but like also acknowledging that you can love somebody in a romantic like situation and still just be their friend and that's okay. Um, and it was just, it was interesting. It was, it was something that it wasn't like anything else I've read from this period. So I definitely recommend this and I am really enjoying Maria. So I will probably have a review for that next month. So those are the six works that I read in November. Um, I will be back tomorrow so the second with another video and then I'll be taking the weekend off and I'll be back on Monday with more videos um and yeah I'm just really excited to be doing vlogmas because vlogmas is a lot of fun to do you know different videos I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some things like cruelty-free makeup because I know that's something that when I was doing my monthly favorites people were 
you know, curious about cruelty-free makeup, so I'm gonna talk about some of my favorites from that, and like all kinds of stuff like that, and talk about minimalism, and if I have time after all my papers are due, I'm gonna try and film an apartment tour, because I know people requested that when I did my bookshelf tour, um, and yeah, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!